you are and every one of you, you are welcome, no matter where you're from. And this is the place that as we come together to worship God, we extend our welcoming hospitality in this very place. You are welcome to join us to sing the praises and prayers that lifts up our spirit. And you are welcome to join us to do the work of Jesus Christ. But today, particularly, we are welcoming our new church members who have gone through a, a membership training and who are committed now to do the partnership of ministry together. So we have Jisun, Usan, and Cliff this morning who will be joining our church community as new members. So part of our worship today, we are dedicating to welcoming them and this register, church register, that records all those previous saints who served this church for during the last over 150 years, their names are recorded here. So part of the ceremony will be our new members will come up and write their names in here. And previously, our faithful club of session have recorded and Bonnie recorded many people throughout the last seven years. And previously, I think Kathy and Ruth and all those faith, uh, faithful servants. So having that in mind, I only wish that more of our church family members that join in this, in this sanctuary, and physically being together and celebrate the moments like this. But wherever you are, where, whether you are in, in your home, worshiping with us virtually, or whether you are here physically in this holy sanctuary, let us rejoice in it. Um, and I would like to um, uh, invite Doug uh, to share some word about Krakow. And you will see the, uh, the pictures. Yes, uh, it's the annual miracle. <laughs> We, uh, I didn't get that many people to sign up for walking, but they emerged. Uh, and so there were probably a dozen of us or 15 of us at, at some point. They, some people came in earlier or later. Uh, and also the money was there, $3,200, which is fabulous. So uh, thanks to all those who donated and who walked. It was a beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you. I regret and, myself. And, and we'll have a we'll have a match. Uh, Kathy assures me that we'll we'll match that, and uh, yet to be determined, they'll announce where that's going to go. A lot of discussion, maybe Afghan refugee uh, through uh, Presbyterian disaster assistance. Thank you. Whether you are physically there last Sunday or whether you are there in prayer and support, we thank you very much. And this is again. Um, sort of uh, heritage of our missional effort, our collective effort. Uh, thank you. Uh, because we dedicate our service to also uh, welcoming our new members, we will not have community sharing. That's why I want to have uh, Dow to share. But for last chance, any is there any church announcement this morning? Any church announcement? No. Okay, then let us bring our hearts and mind. Let us worship God. Good morning. Before we begin, I'd just like to have uh, an explanation, the call to worship. I will read the leader's English. Um, the English members will respond. And then Thomas will read the leader's Korean. And the Korean uh, congregation will respond. For the prayer for illumination, we will all speak our parts simultaneously. Now, can you please rise and join me in the call to worship? Let those who favor my just cause sing out with joy and be glad. Let them say always, God is great. And my tongue shall be talking of your righteousness and of your praise of the Lord. 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 Chur -chur 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 Oh, 
have the Holy Spirit of China and share that. Let us worship God. Our hymn is number 687, verses 1, 3, and 4. understand the scripture in the Old Testament. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13. It says, Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the duty of all mankind. After everything has been heard, then we need to do what we know is right. And just like there are steps to making cookies, there are steps to be Good Christian. First, we listen to teachers of the Bible. That is like gathering the ingredients. Then we decide what we are to do. That is like turning the oven. Finally, we are told to follow God and keep His commandments. That is following the recipe. When we follow God, we will turn out right. Just like following the cookie recipe will turn good cookies. The Bible is going to be our recipe book. It will tell us what to do in order to be good cookies. I mean, good Christians. So please remember, as Christians who love God, we need to follow the directions carefully. So let us keep our important book of direction, the Bible, close to us and read it regularly and follow God and His commandments. Let us pray. I invite you all to pray with me. Dear God, Dear, God, Dear God, thank you for your teaching. Thank you for your teaching. And please help us to keep your commandments. And please help us to keep your commandments. Amen. Amen. Yes, please join us in the prayer of all the nations. Guide us all God, God by your word and Holy Spirit. Spirit. That in your life, in your life, in your in your and in your will, 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 and in any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. 
Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The word of the Lord. Christian, 그는 근본 하나님의 본체시나 하나님과 동등됨을 취할 것을 여기지 아니하시고 오히려 자기를 비워 종의 형체를 가져 사람들과 같이 되었고 사람의 모양으로 나타나셨음에 자기를 낮추시고 죽기까지 복종하셨으니 곧 십자가에 죽으십니다. 이러므로 하나님이 그를 지극히 높여 모든 이름에 뛰어난 이름을 주사 하늘에 있는 자들과 땅 있는 자들과 땅 아래 있는 자들로 모든 무릎을 예수의 이름으로 꿇게 하시고 모든 입으로 예수 그리스도를 주라 시인하여 하나님 아버지께 영광을 돌리게 하셨느니라. 그러므로 나의 사랑하는 자들아, 너희가 나 있을 때뿐 아니라 더욱 지금 나 없을 때에도 항상 복종하여 두렵고 떨림으로 너희 구원을 이루라. 주님의 말씀입니다. 아멘. <목소리> 
Before I share my sermon, I would like to remind that the fully uh, translated Korean version of my sermon is available in the back table. So you are more than welcome to grab uh, those copies if you would like to. Can we express Christ's majesty with just one word? This would be a challenging and difficult exercise. For some of us, we might choose the word love or savior. But for those who want to capture Christ's majesty, only one word, I think, would do justice to his messianic lordship. And this word is humility. Humility is hard to handle, let alone to practice. Some people seem in their mind's eye to see humility, some kind of ladder of humility with themselves close to the top rung. And Jesus said, He who would humble himself will be exalted. But Nietzsche, the famous German philosopher watching Christians said, He who humbles himself wills to be exalted. And here Nietzsche linked the Christian humility to lack of genuine spirit, to self-abasement. Others associate humility with some kind of masochism. Surely you have seen them around, the Christian masochists, who cannot wait to turn themselves like to become a doorman, eagerly awaiting the hob nail of boots of the saints. Of course, the smart sadist. The smart sadist one obliges them. The smart sadist know that the smart thing to do to this Christian masochist is just doing nothing. So amidst of all this confusion, what I will say about humility? What does St. Paul mean? Have this mind among yourself, the mind that Christ has had, especially the one who humbles himself. A while ago, I watched a well-known TV evangelist engage in a panel discussions about sex education in American public school. He was part, a part of the panel and he sees the initiative before everybody else speaks. And he turned to one of the fellow panelists and clearly not of his persuasion and asked bluntly, are you for premarital sex? Taken aback, the panelists began, no, but, yes, but, kind of qualified answers when the preacher cut him off again and said, I am glad to say that I am not, sir, and I'm glad that you are not the teacher of my children. I regret it that the panelist lost the initiative to the preacher. He might have answered, Mr. Preacher, didn't your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ prefer adulterers and prostitutes to their religious leaders and judges and Pharisees. An American poet and a philosopher, Henry Thoreau, once said, there are thousands of people who are hacking at the branches of the tree of evil, but to one who is really attacking at the root of evil. The root of evil is not lack of chastity, but it's lack of charity. The root of evil has little to do with whether or not we are law-abiding people, but everything to do with whether or not we are law-abiding people. Chastity is a matter of the law, 
while love is the matter of grace. And this is not to say that chastity isn't right. For certain people at certain time and perhaps even entire of their lives, But it is to say that the love, love is indispensable at all times. That grace transcends the law. Why did Jesus prefer prostitutes and adulterers to their religious leaders and judges? He couldn't stand, Jesus couldn't stand a spiritual arrogance. Why did our Lord Jesus prefer the prodigal son to the one who stayed at home and, and served his father and worked all day? He couldn't stand spiritual arrogance. Why did Jesus prefer the tax collector over the Pharisee? Again, the core matter here is a spiritual arrogance. A famous German theologian, Hans Quinn, described the God of our Lord as a God who even seemed to have abandoned his own law, God's own law. A God not of a devout observers of the law, but of the law breakers, and according to him, and even with its Slight exaggerations, God is a God not of the God of fear, but rather a God of Godless. Sometimes we forget how truly scandalous the teachings of our Jesus Christ for our time as well as for his time 2,000 years ago. And so we, so we miss the much needed consolation found in his reassuring descriptions of our God as a caring woman, or a good shepherd, or a person rejoicing at finding what is lost, as a magnanimous king, or a generous lender, or a gracious judge, who forgives sinners at the spot, on the spot. I say all this because humility comes from the Latin word humus, which means earth. I think Christians should be more earthy, not only earthly, but also earthy. And it is certain that we are earthbound. Those who think differently, who think that we should, we should have straight upward for heaven bound, forgetting that on our way up, up, we encounter our Lord Jesus Christ on his way down where we are. And if heaven comes down to us, if God comes down to where we are, why on earth should anyone head up for heaven? Isn't that, in some sense, a spiritual arrogance? Isn't that saying with the Pharisee, God, I thank you that I'm not like those people over there, such as tax collectors, adulterers, prostitutes, and all those bunch of sinners. Besides, none of us, none of us can really rise that high. The moral profile of any human being resembles somewhat the silhouette of like giraffe, huge, high and lofty up front and perhaps very small in the back, ragged. So humility has something to do with being earthly and also even being earthy. What else can we say 
I said at outset that humility is often associated with guilt, feeling guilty. Actually, guilt is more re uh, related to pride rather than humility. In fact, the guilt may be the last stronghold of pride. For guilt represents my opinion about myself, whereas forgiveness represents yours and God's opinion about myself. I can make excuses for myself, but I cannot forgive myself. Nor if we can only forgive what we cannot condone. You can forgive me, God can forgive me, but I cannot forgive myself. And it just may be that I am too proud to allow you or God to do for me what I cannot do for myself. And sometimes it is more blessed to receive than to give. At least it takes, I think, more humility. So to be humble means to be earthy and also to accept our forgiveness and remembering that our value is a gift of God, not an achievement to show up. Let me offer you one more suggestion. To be humble means that you are also so busy caring and thinking about others that all of a sudden you forget about yourself. And in other words, to be humble means to be loving, which sounds straightforward enough, but it isn't. In the first place, to love others, you have to love yourself genuinely and wholeheartedly. Love is the gift of oneself. And how will you make a gift of that which you don't like or what you hate? Moreover, to love means to become vulnerable, to take risks. I wonder how many of us, for the sake of others, are willing to lose our money. Quite a few, I would imagine. But let us ask how many of us, for the sake of others, that we are willing to lose our, our reputation good reputation, fewer, I would imagine. For even though we know that what consists is not how we look in the eyes of others, but how we look in the eyes of God and God's angels, nonetheless, that knowledge emotionally is difficult to appropriate. And now suppose for the sake of sake of the world, the entire world. We Americans, if we are asked to give up our military power, military supremacy, would we give up power for love? And finally, she really spells a joy. It is fun to be earth, earthy and earthly. It is joyful to be forgiven, and there is simply nothing like that sense of undeserved integrity, which comes in the moments of grace, when we are truly able to love one another. But more, as St. Paul wrote, not I, but Christ who dwells in me. St. Paul understood that whatever is good, Whatever is just is of God. It seems to me that to the degree that you don't have to take credit for your talents, to the same degree that you are truly free to enjoy the gift and talents that God has given you. I love to see somebody receive a compliment and hear her say, thank you with all the gratitude and the joy 
that comes with instead not having to say that oh oh well it's nothing really nothing much so dear friends my word for you for this week the week ahead is be humble be humble earthy forgiving loving and full of joy praise the name of our lord jesus christ amen amen thinking about the word and the message and um, i would like to share with the hymn of praise this is youtube clip litany of humility and i think the composer of the music really reflects what it means to be humble as a Christian. So let us sing quietly together.
this portion of our worship service as a welcome service for new members. Cliff and Jisan and Usan have found a spiritual home here at PCIN. And they have heard the God's call to love this community and to be loved by this community. And now they seek to deepen their relationship with all the family members of PCIN, also deepen their dedication for the work of Jesus Christ, making this world a better place to live. Um, as you know, Cliff has joined, has almost started worshiping with us two years ago at least. And it was a great joy to see him sitting in the pew and worship together. And uh, I remember my first encounter with them through El Anon uh, meetings and, and it's just uh, God's blessings uh, to be connected with our communities in this special way. And ever since then, he is faithfully and in a dedicated way to, to be part of our community and currently serving as a elder uh, of our community. It's a wonderful. Uh, Jisan is a very multi-talented woman and dedicated servant of God. And she teaches Korean language in Fordley area and she teaches some of the uh, also Korean schools for many, nearly I think 15, more than 15 years. She is the head director for um, the Korean language school summer camp that dedicated two weeks of length, gathering good 200, over 200 second generation Korean uh, young people and teach them Korean heritage, language, and other things. And so she's um, a very special person. Uh, so she will be also joining with us and Usan. Now many of you may know his hidden talent. He's a wonderful baritone person. Much more than my voice. He's a perfect person for bass and I'm looking for into the future that when we have a combined um, choir um, along with Norm and he'll be a wonderful person. And he's very dedicated servant of God Prior to joining our community, he has served God's church in a deep way, in a very dedicated way. So it is our great joy to welcome him through this special ceremony. And before we enter into the ceremony, I would like to offer a short prayer. So let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the life the journey that brought Cliff, Jisun, Usan to join our church today. We celebrate the unique impact that they will make here and already have made here. Through their presence, sharing their gifts and talents, may this congregation offer support in times of trouble and rejoice with them always. May our church, Presbyterian Church in Norway, the home strengthen their faith, deepen their discipleship. All this we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. I would like to invite all three of our new members. If you are able, please come and stand in the front. And also flower session. Bonnie, would you please come forward as well? So Cliff and Chisan, Usan, please come forward. Um, please uh, face to our congregation. And I'm going to ask you three or four questions. Please listen carefully. I'm going to read slowly. Please listen carefully and answer affirmatively with a sure assurance. 
Today we make a covenant with one another and we make promise to one another before God so that we can depend on each other through good times and hard times. Cliff and Jisan and Usan, you have a church and a people and so now we ask you these questions. Do you affirm your faith in God as your creator, in Christ as your inspiration, and in the Holy Spirit as your strength? If so, please say, I do. I do. Thank you. Do you promise to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of Jesus, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to be a witness to the healing ministry? the loving message of Jesus Christ as best as you are able. If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. Thank you. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in faith and to be an active and joyful member of this church? If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. One last question. Do you promise to participate in the life and the mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the works of this local church as it serves this community and the world? If so, please say, I promise. With the help of God. Thank you. Now we have a plug of session to ask questions to the entire congregation. This is our promise to these new members. Do you promise to help Cliff, Ji Sun, and Wu Sun find their place in the body of Christ, to pray with and for them? To welcome them fully in holy friendship, to be angels for them in times of distress, and servants to them in times of need. If so, please answer, we promise with the help of God. We, we promise, promise with the help of God. Let us, the members of Presbyterian Church of North, express our welcome and form our common ministries together. So you will see the common confessions on the screen. So let us read together. We joyfully welcome you to the common life of our church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hope and the labor of this church. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we grow together in faith and be witness to the love of God and the peace of Christ. Now, I would like to invite all of you to stretch out your right hand toward all three of our new members. And this way, we can keep our appropriate distance at this time. And this extending of our right hand symbolizes our Christian love and support for them. So, in the name of Jesus Christ, on behalf of our church, we extend to you, Cliff and Jisan and Usan, our right hand of God, Christian love, welcoming you into the company and the family of our, our uh, church, Presbyterian Church in Norway. So as I offer a prayer, blessing prayer for them, please join with me. Loving God, Loving God. Give, to your give to your children, clip, Jisun and Wusun, strength for their life journey, courage in times of suffering, the comfort of faith, love that cannot die, laughter in the company of friends, and the hope of new life. And the of life. Through, Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, who makes us one body, who makes us one body to, glorify God, to glorify God in all that we serve and do. In all that we serve and do. 
Amen. 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 Let us give them a warm round of applause. Church has prepared a small gift for you. And Mani will present this to each one of you. Right now, we have all uh, large chests, but if you would like to change it, we have different size. So, <laughs> let's give them another one. So, you wear this when you join crop walks, when we go on mission trip, and so this is part of our uniform. And now, before you go, we will have a secret ceremony of writing your own names here. And Cliff, our Facebook club session already recorded your name here. Okay. And so we will skip that. Uh, but uh, Jisun, uh, yeah, at least you can initial next to your name. Thank you. And Jisun, write your name. Literally. 1,376 saints in the history of our church. 1,377 saints in our church. Uh, can you just stand there and take a picture together like that? And Bonnie? Yeah. Let's, let's take it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Our God is gracious at all times. So, in response to God's love and guidance, that is going our offerings.
love of God go with us this day and forevermore. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.